This is me, December 31st, 2009. I had just gotten my first Mac ever. And in the over excitement of setting it up, I had taken my on the desk hard drive that housed every memory I had ever built up to this point, plugged it into the iMac, and when I got to the screen where it asked me what I wanted to do with that newly plugged in hard drive, I apparently temporarily forgot the definition of format smashing the continue and next buttons as fast as I could. Within three seconds, I had lost over 38,000 raw photos, videos, eight millimeter digitized home movies I had made, everything. To this day, 16 years later, I still cringe at those three seconds. And here's the thing that most people don't realize about backups is they can be as simple or complex as you need or want it to be. And so today I am for the first time testing out Ugreen. Specifically, this is the DXP 4800 plus. Again, it's a four bay drive, meaning you can get four different hard drives in here. Now what's cool is they've actually opened up the expandability of different types of drives from different brands. And you can have traditional three and a half inch or two and a half inch hard disk drives. You can put in SSDs, M.2s. It's a huge list of what you can put in there. So I'll leave a link to the new compatibility website in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. But this specific unit can house up to 112 terabytes of storage space. Now currently in there, I just have four four terabyte drives giving me 16 terabytes of space. But the way RAID hard drives work is they actually split the data up and you can pick different types of RAIDs. This isn't the video to go over all the different types of RAIDs, but I have a RAID 5, which is probably the most common and the most safe for the average person. This basically means that I have a single disk failure redundancy, meaning if one of these drives fails, then all of the other drives have enough data on them to recreate the data as soon as I insert a new drive into that bay that had the failed drive and I have zero data loss. Now again, this is a NAS, which is a little different than my 8D, which is a DAS, which stands for Direct Attached Storage. A NAS is Network Attached Storage. So this actually isn't physically plugged in to my computer. It's chilling over there, plugged right into my router, and now this means I can access it from any computer, my phone, my iPad, and not just when I'm on my home Wi-Fi, but anywhere in the world, which you obviously can already tell some of the benefits that that can give you if you're out and about and you need to access your demo reel, some raw photos to re-download on your device to make edits or whatever. So when you launch the software on your computer, it almost looks like a virtual machine because it kind of is. It has its own app store that you can open up and download some different utility apps and media. And you can turn this into like a home media machine if you want to, having it plugged in via the HDMI port hooked up to like a projector or TV and have all your movies that you can automatically play in a library. And you can get crazy with this thing. They actually have a new AI photo search tool. So if you download the photos app from the app store on it, you of course can import as many different types of photos as you want to, but now if you go to settings, you can turn on all of these different AI models that can look at reading text, object recognition, and of course, facial recognition. So now you can have uh, facial recognized albums. And this is really helpful. I did a quick test by importing a bunch of photos of Michelle and uh, uh, the recent Italy trip. And within just a handful of minutes, it's able to scan all the photos and pull out different people you can go in there and name the new people. And of course, every time you add new photos, if it recognizes their faces, it will add them to their album. I should also make a note when it comes to formats. Again, I know a lot of people are working with raw files, whether photos or videos, a ton of raw photo support. I've had no issues opening and previewing files and thumbnails from my Canon camera and B-RAW and raw video formats can be a little different. I'm not seeing any thumbnail previews, but I'm also not getting thumbnail previews for B-RAW on Mac OS, so that's not really anything new. What is nice is I can easily download, and I tested it on this pretty high res slow motion file. It downloaded in the matter of like 40 seconds, throws it on my desktop or wherever I choose uh, for lo local storage, and I was able to view the clip very fast and easy. Now, some of you may be watching already and thinking, Michael, a RAID machine is not a backup. We're going to get to that in just a minute. But first I wanna talk about how I was impressed by the performance of this machine. Now we've all seen video reviews of units like this, right? And people transfer some photos, some video clips, and they're like, look, wow, how, 
look how fast it transfers like this one gig file or this couple hundred megabytes photo album or whatever. No, I wanted to push this thing to the limits of my networks, which is, to be fair, gigabit internet. But I wanted to transfer this folder with over six terabytes of raw 8K and 6K video inside of it. I'll be honest, I was expecting to be like, all right, I'm gonna come back in like a week or 10 days and see how this thing is doing. No, it did it within 24 hours. That shocked me. That opened up a lot of doors because while I may not edit off of this thing, this is something that I'm using for archiving and just kind of recently fresh projects that I may need to grab things from. If I do want to download a, uh, a roll file from a YouTube video that is 120 gigs, I need it to, to not take four hours to do that 100 gigs or whatever. Now, if you want even faster transfers, there are a lot of ports on this thing. You can plug in an SD card directly from your camera, have it automatically offload the photos and videos from that directly into the NAS. You can hook up a XFAT USB drive. But for the most part, in my use cases, I've just been interfacing through it as a proper NAS system, and I've been very happy with the transfer speeds. The interface, the apps, the software updates, everything has been smooth sailing, but I was really nervous about if it had one specific feature that I really, really wanted this to have, a proper backup solution. Because again, the reason I lost that 38,000 photos and videos was because of I accidentally formatted a hard drive. Well, guess what? I could accidentally reformat this NAS tomorrow or lightning could come through that window and strike it. So many things could happen to this one specific unit that even though I have single disk redundancy and it's RAID, which gives a little bit more reliability and safety to the data, it is not a backup. Now, when I first got this system up and running, I saw one of the built-in apps was a backup and sync solution. And when you open it up, you can do a web dev or something called an R sync, which I looked into, which apparently is a relatively common like syncing tool. And you can go in and if you have multiple NASs, which a lot of people do, right? Like if I set a NAS at my uh, parents' house, for example, I can have them in constant syncing. So when I add files on this, it automatically syncs to that NAS. That is a proper backup because we have two completely separate locations. And we have, of course, cloning drives, essentially, that are cloning in real time. But for me, and I think so many creatives like the people watching this, uh, that's a heavy investment because that means you basically have to buy two of whatever NAS solutions you're uh, setting up with. And so I much prefer to have a cloud backup option, which they do have a new cloud utility tool. Now, when I opened this up recently, it looks like you can utilize with, uh, I guess, Microsoft has some backup stuff. I, I know nothing about their backup solution, but the other one is their integration for Google Drive. Now this I have because I have a GC business, whatever. I have like 15 terabytes for pretty cheap on Google Drive. And so I thought, perfect. I essentially have a little over 10 terabytes of storage on here. I have 15 terabytes available on Google Drive. And so within like three button clicks, I was able to connect to my Google Drive account and set to backup everything within my personal folder. You can go in and deselect folders if you don't want it to backup, but I basically backed up everything and I started with that six terabyte file. And you can see that it's backing up pretty quick, over 100 megabytes per second on average. So again, this isn't gonna take five minutes to transfer those six terabytes, but let's see, I started it maybe like an hour ago or so, 45 minutes. Yeah, we're at just under 240 gigs already transferred. And so for me, this has become the perfect backup solution. Not only do I get a convenient way to access my files on my network, so I can be anywhere in the world and still access anything I need to. Raids and NASs can be incredibly complex to set up. And I understand that you nor I wanna be Linus Tech Tips. This thing was up and running in the matter of 15, 20 minutes. So, so far I am very impressed with Ugreen and I'm very thankful that they sent this unit out to me. If you want an even better deal on a Ugreen unit, check out my link in the description below to get an extra 15% off. But I am very impressed out the gate. If any of you guys have Ugreen and have some tips for me to make my experience even better, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.